Okay, today I'm doing a video based off of a uh, tutorial by DJ Bot and Sons Monument Company on how to letter in letters of a V cut gravestone. Uh, this is my these are my great grandparents on my father's side, my father's mother's parents. Um, some of these lettering this time of the day you can actually kind of see the lettering, but when the sun's out and you come here, it's like it, it almost looks like the back of this whole gravestone is just blank, it hasn't even carved yet. So I'm gonna clean these letters out. Um, I actually already did scrub them down. They had some moss growing in them. Um, and they actually still do. There's this one little letter here. It's got some moss growing in it. Um, so I scrubbed it down. I'm just gonna wait for it to dry a little bit more. You can see how some of the letters have a little kind of dark ring around them. That's just from the water I was using to clean it. So I'll be right back when these are all dry and we'll start masking off and I'll show you what to do. Okay, I've got it all mashed off. As you can see, that's just the area that's, that's got the lettering on it. The rest of it's just uncarved or rough edges around the edges there. So, masked off as much as I could. I just didn't want to have to clean up more than I have to. Because um, the overspray is going to get pretty much everywhere in this unmasked area when we go spray it. So, um, next part is, oh yeah, you can see the letters are a little bit less hard to read, a little bit more hard to read now too. Although it still looks like you can read them, so. I don't mean to prove myself wrong here and the fact that they're illegible, but trust me, they are most of the time. Um, all right, next part is we're gonna mix, or we're gonna spread some molasses. Sorry about that. This is gonna get coated on the face of the stone. We're gonna roll it on with a foam. It's like a six inch foam roller, just foam, not like a nap, not like a, I don't know, a regular roller with a nap, just foam. Um, it, provides, it, it prevents the the material from getting inside the actual V lettering. We just want it on the face of the stone, not in the cut at all, because that's where we want to paint. So, got a little bit in there. Just gonna get it on here lightly. And then just a really light coat here. It, it's not dripping at all, it's just kind of a light coat. Sorry about the jilting. Okay. Now, let's see. I'm having to press it on a little bit, so I'm going to put a little bit more molasses in the roller so I don't press so much because if I have to press more, it's going to start going in the letters. A little bit more on there, it's still not dripping. That's pretty good, so I'll try that. I'm gonna, I've never done this before, but I, in my belief, the key is to take your time in getting this on here, because we, just, we don't want to start having to press the molasses in the letters by accident. Kind of starting to every time I put more molasses on here, I'm kind of starting it on the open area where there's no lettering, just in case there's any gobs on it that might give me some problems. Start going in the letters. Um, so again, the reason we're using the molasses is because it doesn't really dry on the face of the of the stone so much. It just kind of sits there and it stays gooey for a while. So it's if you ever painted anything um, and you don't prep the surface the right way, the paint just peels off soon after, you know, whether it's a month or a year, depending on the use. Um, so we're kind of trying to replicate that, essentially using the molasses. We're, we're just giving it a, a horrible, horrible um, surface to adhere to by using this molasses on here. That way it's easier for, us to take, for me to come and take it off after I finish painting. looks kind of cool just having the gray lettering shine through. One other thing that's really cool is um, this family 
uh, as with almost half my half of my family came from Lebanon, so they have this cool little well, little. I say it like it's like it's a novelty, but it's their um, what I'm assuming is their family name wood in Arabic on here. So you know, every time I come here and see the stone, I really want to like be able to read what it, not read it, but see what it says and like see the actual writing on here. But it's just, it's so hard to see it because it's like it blends in with the stone so much. So. Hopefully by putting some paint in there, it'll really make it pop out of the stone. Never knew these people, obviously. But the last one died in 59, but... So it's really... You know, when I... I do a lot of ancestry stuff on, this, on my own, and... You know, you look at these cemeteries, and they're just filled with, like, thousands of stones that look the same. You know, and after your initial family that knew you dies off, after you die and no one really knows you and knows your story so I, I just wish these stones had more uniqueness to them you know they had they had some kind of like a little bit of who you were not just you know the, the granite memorial that stands the test of time um, this guy um, Gabriel Wood was a really really great woodworker. He made some really ornate pieces that are at my great aunt's house. Uh, my uncle George died two years ago in 2014. He was there. Uh, the last son that was alive, he was a pilot in World War II. He's buried in the cemetery also, but acres away. Um, anyway, so his wife Madeline is, is around. She lives in Grafton and she's got a couple of his pieces of Gabriel's pieces of wood that are furniture that he made out of wood in their house and they're amazing so you know just being able to put something on these memorials that tells about what you did like that you were a you know master woodworker on here so when someone that never knew you walks by they can see that that would just be something neat to do but obviously you're not gonna do that but just even having this their name in Arabic sets it apart a little bit, in my opinion. Although we're in the old school Arabic section of the of the cemetery now, and a lot of the stones around here have something similar. So it looks like it's going on okay. It's covering, but it's not really going in the actual carved out letters. of my first video of doing this kind of thing without just doing it on my own and being silent so it's kind of awkward for me to do this work and then lose focus but it's cool I like it all right so uh, looks like we're almost there Temptation to like put the roller on its side and just kind of squeeze something in between some letters, but I don't want to cause more problems for myself, so I'm just going to take my time and roll over it enough times that it covers. I still got some sparseness right here. Okay. And obviously, nothing I'm using today is shown to degrade the stone. You know, this is the last, I'm using a foam roller. When we get done, we're gonna use um, a scrub brush and some uh, razor to scrape off anything that's left behind. So um, now that this is all done, I'll just, I'm not done yet. Just kidding. Uh, yeah, that's good, I think. Cool. All right, now that that's all set, I'm going to give this a minute just to set up a little bit. Um, so, you know, just molasses I bought from the store. I don't even know what brand it is, just whatever was on sale. Other things I brought, a bucket with water. Let's hope I don't get any spray paint on it. My wife would be kind of pissed. 
um, foam, uh, nylon brush just to get all the junk off when we're done painting. Uh, razor, it's around here somewhere, but the square, the rectangle blades. Oh, this little thing with the little green handle so it's easier to use when we're scraping off the final product. And then I also brought bunch of newspaper and tape obviously and dish soap paint thinner in case it's giving me a really hard time coming off so uh, while that's drying what else can I say oh so with the masking I just really tried to make sure that nothing there's not gonna be any overspray from the spray can getting on the stone at all these you can obviously get it off the flat part really easily the, the polished part of the granite but these sides are rough cut and you know if you get paint in there you're kind of screwed so uh, it's not coming off till nature wants it to come off um, one thing I was thinking was so this stone is obviously here probably at least a hunt at least uh, 65 years I almost wonder if more of these stones were painted in the lettering and the paints gone kind of gone away when I was a kid and even before I started learning about this a little bit. I just imagine there's some kind of like magic paint that always stayed there with the stone the whole time and never, never wore away. But I mean, just like any paint, you know, nature's gonna run its course on it eventually, and it's gonna go away. So maybe these letters were painted at one time too, and they're gone. I don't really know, but um, yeah, I didn't really ask anyone else in my family if this was okay, but. Uh, honestly, this stone shows no signs of anyone having been here. So, you know, I planted flowers here last year and I came back a little while later and they were dead and gone. And I don't know, the people that would have visited these stones that I know are not around anymore either. So, kind of operate under the mindset of, you know, do it now and ask for forgiveness later. So. I'm going to pause this and come back in a minute when this molasses is a little bit more set up and I'm ready to start spraying. Alright, it's been about 5-10 minutes maybe. I'm going to start spraying. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention, it's kind of ironic, this page right here have the obituaries on it. I'm still new to this, I haven't really desensitized yet. Okay, uh, this is just Home Depot Rust-Oleum spray paint. I don't endorse it. I haven't even used it yet on this application, This is, but this is what I'm using now. So don't buy it unless you like the outcome of this video. Um, it's, it says it's good at masonry. It's not like a specific like, you know, masonry formula or anything like that. I didn't really, couldn't really find anything like that. Um, in the video that I watched, it said that there was no, you know, no big deal in differences. So it was all the same once it entered the graveyard. So, um, and we'll try it out, see what happens. This is gonna feel like so wrong doing this, but hopefully it turns out good. Just kind of going in um, different directions to make sure it all goes in okay. Feels so wrong. <laughs> uh, anything I can do to make this operation look more legitimate while there's other people around makes it better. I don't have the luxury of taking this back to my shop. It's like a thousand pound stone. I don't even have a shop now, so. So I'm just kind of looking at the letters. The face of the stone was obviously more smooth, so the paint's kind of like glossing on the top of it more and like orange peeling a little bit. Inside the letters is not so smooth yet because they were just ground out or carved out or whatever. So it looks like they could probably use a little bit more paint inside the letters. So I'm just, one thing I'm just trying to be conscious of is not letting the paint drip too much. If 
this can sprays in this kind of pattern. So I gotta turn it like this a little bit to go up and down. Spray painting a gravestone. I just don't want to get to the end of this, take all the excess off, and realize I didn't put enough on. So, again, it looks like. Coverage is now pretty good. There's a lot of reflection of white inside the black in the letters. I think it's just from the sky and from my white shirt, but it's tricking me to make it look like it's not yet covered. I just don't want to go overboard. Probably being overly analytical. Oh well. Back when this is dried a little bit. One thing I want to go over is something you can do if um, you get some dripping inside the letters because the dripping just generally isn't good it's probably gonna make it less adhering. So I brought this little detailing little paintbrush I got from Michaels. Um, I'm just gonna take it and look through all the letters and if I see any drips I'll just kind of try to even them out you know spread them down and clean them out a little bit. Um, I actually didn't see any evidence of that yet but just something to keep in mind and you can clean the brush off after. Actually, there's some drips on the face of the stone. The paint's already getting a little tacky and it's only been about a minute or two. Um, yeah, it looks, you know, it looks good here. So I'm not, I'm not going to do any more of this because I don't need to, but if you see any drips inside the letters, I would use one of these little brushes and anything, you know, doesn't even matter, it could be from a kid's art set, just to smooth out the paint inside the letters if, if it drips and collects in there. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. The paint is starting to set up. I just got so excited that I started working on one of them. Um, as you can see, here's some of the wording. I did a little bit of scraping on here and it came up pretty cool. So that's just the, the width of the razor blade scraping away the surface, leaving behind the paint inside of the number. Uh, it's funny because in here it's still sticky like molasses, like something got spilled on it on a granite countertop, but we'll clean that off after. So pretty cool. Um, by touching the surface of here, it's not even so much tacky. Well, actually it is. Well, that was a high spot, but um, some of the lower spots, less tacky but um, so I'll probably wait a few more minutes before I come back and start scraping the rest of this paint off but looking good so far okay it's been about 20 minutes since I started since I put this coat of paint on just the one coat um, I showed you this little piece here that I started to take off it came off pretty cool really 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 clean edge here with, at the bottom of the nine um, so I'm gonna just start with my razor and start scraping the rest of it off um, in the, the bot video I mentioned earlier, they used this thing called a clean stone. It's basically like a like a stone, a block made of like recycled ground glass, which is not as hard as the granite, so the glass will kind of eat away while getting the, all the gunk off the face of the stone but leaving the granite intact. I don't have one of those, so I'm just gonna scrape and brush at the end. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll use the brush more. I'm not really sure yet. Oh yeah, 
See how it left that inside of the W behind really nice. The only problem is now I gotta scrape all this gunk off the razor and it's, my hands are gonna be nasty by the end of this. The cool thing is too, since the paint is really not bonding to the surface well, which is what I want, it's kind of like tearing a sheet away behind it. You can kind of see when I pull on it, it pulls a little bit with it. Even though that's happening, it doesn't affect what's inside the lettering. It's not really connected to it. So no matter how much peeling away we have on the surface, um, it's not affecting inside the letters. So we're still getting that clean edge. There again, nice clean letter. No tearing, no, nothing going wrong inside the letter, but a perfectly clean surface. It's, this is awesome. That molasses did a really good job of preventing the paint from bonding to the surface. Oh yeah. One thing I said earlier that I realized I shouldn't have done was I was so hesitant when I started spraying the paint on. I didn't want to make anybody that's never done this before like nervous about doing something like this. It's not like I'm not seeing any problems and even if I even if this was proving harder to get off than I thought, I mean it's still gonna come off. It's still on granite. It's not like it's it's not like I painted I don't know the side of a house with spray paint and I, now I can't wash it off and so it's still gonna come off. Um, so I would still encourage someone to do this. Not only is it coming out really well, but I like to think that my great grandparents would be happy and feel a little honored um, in me honoring them by doing this and kind of making their names more prominent in here and more visible to those walking by. Really excited too that this um, Arabic writing that says wood is going to be visible now. Honestly, up till now, I really haven't been able to. I mean, I can't read Arabic obviously, but I haven't really been able to see what it said because it was just so. It blends it in with the stone so much, you know. Now it's coming through pretty clearly. This, you know, the stone. This piece of granite is nice. It has, uh, but it has. A lot of light colors and a lot of very dark colors all mixed in in the grain of it so it just makes anything that you put on it harder to make out some of the spots where I started by like peeling some of the paint away and didn't quite finish and then came back that some of the paint actually dried a little bit on the stone so it's taking a little bit more effort to get it off but it's still coming off okay like I don't know if you can see right here just maybe get the scrape a little more and again this this whole surface is kind of sticky because of the molasses but we'll get it Their daughter, my grandmother, um, Rose, um, she passed away in 2003. She's in the cemetery as well. Um, she married my grandfather, whose last name is Corey, and his grandparents were the ones that came to America in, at the end of the 1800s, like 1897, I believe. And they died right before World War II when we were still kind of in the Depression. So I, I mean, I virtually know nothing about them um, other than their names and where they were buried. And my 
grandfather's cousin said that they, uh, my great grandfather sold horses in the desert. I'm assuming in, you know, somewhere in Syria. Um, but I'm assuming that they were, you know, they were probably not of much means, and they were just buried actually probably about 100 feet that way from here. And they didn't, they don't have headstones. Their markers were sunken underground. Um, so I worked at the cemetery. They were actually really helpful. Um, they sent some groundskeepers out here and they actually found where the, the headstone, the, you know, the grave markers were, because that's all they had was just the markers, little concrete cones they put in the ground there with the numbers on them. They found where they were for me. And, um, I'm hoping to learn how to cut stone or carve letter in stone. Maybe a future project will be for me to carve their names in a, they will only let me put in um, those flat markers because they were each buried separately a few feet away from each other in different plots. So if it's a single single burial plot, you can't use a tall, like a stand-up headstone, you can only use the flat ones. So maybe I'll get my hands in some granite blocks and letter some make them up for them and put them in the ground as a memorial. So at this point I could stop. You can see it's all all the you know sprayed stuff is basically gone. There's still some spots here and there though so I wanna I'm gonna get more nitty gritty about it and try to scrape as much as I can off and I'll pause the video because it'll probably take me a little bit longer and um this is some gunk somewhere you know in these little spaces so I'll turn it back on when I'm done that and uh, I don't want to start scrubbing the face of it off before the insides of the letters are fully dry yet either so we'll be back in a minute okay I took a few more minutes and scraped a lot of the extra gunk off right by 290 so kind of noisy I'm just gonna put some detergent in some water it's probably been about half an hour now since I sprayed so the, obviously the paints not like dry dry like set dry but I'm not gonna be here all day either so got this pretty much so that I can rub my hand over it and it's not sticky anymore actually it is if I stop so Hopefully this will fix it. I'm not going to go too crazy hard because of that paint not being totally dry yet. But Some of the suds that are coming down I'm noticing are they still have tins of the molasses in it. So that's good. We're all really happy with how this came out. It was straightforward, you know, put coating the face of it and spraying it and scraping the paint off came off really easily. I've done some projects where, you know, cleaning out when, when you're repainting old windows and you want to repaint those, like it takes hours to scrape. You know, you gotta, if you use like a paint stripper on the windows, you, you let it sit and then you go back and scrape it off. It takes hours. It's a really tedious process. This just was take the razor and just go right up and down and you know get it out it took a few minutes obviously but it wasn't like a it wasn't a pain for sure all right that's good i'm gonna go dump this and get some clean water and then wet it down and i'll be done okay uh, it's been another five minutes or so i got clean water i'm gonna just rinse it off and we'll be done
all in all, I was pretty happy with how it came out. Um, the paint came off really easily, but it stuck inside the letters really well because of the texture of the letters. There was no peeling inside the letters at all. Um, when I came, I came back later on that day when everything was dry and cleaned up and took some glamour shots. So I'll show those now. And um, I'm just happy because it, it now you can see the different. You can actually see the lettering, whereas before it blended in with that, with that um, speckled surface on the granite. It was just cool because it separates the finish of it from the other stones around. It just it's different. There aren't really any other stones around there that have this, but I don't think anyone will care. So that's it, and I hope you enjoyed the video.